Apollo Saturn 204 mission, the first manned flight is scheduled to last up to 14 days. The prime missions will be to evaluate the performance of the spacecraft and its crew during Earth orbit and to evaluate the performance of the launch vehicle. At Chrysler Michu, S-1B-4 pre-static checkout began October 6th and was completed November 8th. Preparations for stage shipment started immediately. It departed Michu December 7th and was offloaded at Marshall December 13th. Static testing is scheduled for January. At Marshall, the booster for the fourth flight vehicle underwent two successful static firings, the first on January 17th, the second on January 21st. The booster was shipped from Marshall January 28th, 10 days ahead of schedule. Adverse weather and river conditions at Cairo, Illinois, prevented further safe transit. The Palaemon returned to MSFC February 9th. At Marshall's Michoud assembly facility, Chrysler completed post-static checkout May 25th on the booster for the fourth flight vehicle. The stage is scheduled for shipment to the Cape next quarter. Following completion of post-static checkout at Michoud by Chrysler, the booster for the fourth flight vehicle was shipped from Michoud August 10th and arrived at KSC August 15th. S-4B-204 systems in-plant checkout was completed December 17th. Modifications and preparations for shipment are underway. Following final inspection, the stage is scheduled for shipment to SACTO early next quarter. At Douglas's Huntington Beach facility, inspection and installation of components in the LH-2 tank for the second stage of the fourth flight vehicle were completed in early January. On January 10th, the stage was shipped aboard the Orion from Seal Beach, arriving at SACTO January 14th. It was installed in Beta-3 test stand upon arrival. Following receiving inspection and modification and installation of late parts, pre-static checks began January 24th. On March 18th, Douglas successfully acceptance fired the stage on the first attempt. The stage is now expected to be ready for delivery well ahead of schedule. At Douglas' SACTO facility, the second stage for the fourth flight vehicle underwent modification, rework, and post-static checkout at the Vertical Checkout Laboratory. The stage was accepted by Marshall at SACTO on May 6th. Shipment to Cape Kennedy will be next quarter. The Douglas-built second stage for the fourth flight vehicle was shipped from the west coast to KSC on August 6th aboard the Super Guppy. Fabrication assembly for SIU-204 was completed in December. Component installation is planned to start next quarter. Component installation in the fourth flight instrument unit continued throughout the period, with completion planned for next quarter. At IBM Huntsville, component installation in the fourth flight instrument unit started last period was completed the first week in May. Checkout began in May and was completed on June 28th. The unit will be shipped from IBM to the Cape early next quarter. The instrument unit, assembled and tested by IBM for the fourth flight vehicle, arrived at KSC August 16th aboard the Super Guppy. Following availability of Launch Complex 34, all stages of AS-204 were stacked by the end of August. Pre-flight checkout is underway. At the end of September, the launch vehicle had been erected on the launch pad and was undergoing pre-flight checkout. The spacecraft was undergoing checkout at the Kennedy Space Center's industrial area. The flight crew, including Virgil Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Chaffee, was in final training. For future Apollo Saturn 1 missions, the first flight lunar module entered checkout and final assembly at Grumman Aircraft, and acceptance firings began for the vehicle's descent stage engine at San Juan Capistrano. Launch of the first manned uprated Saturn 1 spacecraft was rescheduled for next quarter because of spacecraft problems. Checkout of Saturn 204 was satisfactory except for one booster engine which was replaced due to a turbo pump problem.
At Cape Kennedy, tragedy struck the Apollo Saturn program when three astronauts, Virgil Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Chaffee, lost their lives in a spacecraft fire while preparing for the AS-204 manned orbital flight. Although the January 27th fire destroyed the spacecraft, shown here being removed for detailed examination, the launch vehicle was undamaged. The review board, appointed immediately after the incident, determined that the fire was probably caused by an electrical arc. To maintain program momentum, NASA is revising mission assignments and flight schedules. Marshall management is responding to these changes and will provide flight-ready launch vehicles as required to support the new mission plans. Saturn 204 will now launch an unmanned lunar module into Earth orbit for tests and checkout this fall. The changes required to the vehicle and ground support equipment, although extensive for the available time, are well underway and will be completed as scheduled. In conjunction with the new mission, the vehicle is shown being moved in late March from KSC's Launch Complex 34 to Launch Complex 37, which is equipped for lunar module launches. Saturn 204 was selected for the next mission in order to take early advantage of the last fully instrumented R&D vehicle. Saturn 205, 206, and 207 will be launched in that order. Toward the end of July, checkout at KSC of lunar module components indicated there were problems with the limb ascent and descent stages. During August, it became apparent that these problems would necessitate further testing and possible replacement of components. By the end of the quarter, it was definite that these problems were serious enough to warrant rescheduling of the 204 launch until the first quarter of 1968. Preparations were underway for Apollo 5, the first flight test of the lunar module. This flight, set for January 1968, would check out the final space hardware necessary to complete the first manned lunar landing mission. Success for Apollo 5, hard on the heels of Apollo 4, would mean we were well on our way to the lunar mission. Now the lunar module, dubbed LM-1, sits in its protective technological cocoon atop the tested and proven Saturn 1B launch vehicle, waiting for the boost into the environment for which it was designed, space. It will not return to Earth, but will continue in a gradually decaying orbit until it re-enters and burns up. In the blockhouse at Cape Kennedy, the men have assembled to do the job. From Marshall Space Flight Center, from the Kennedy Space Center and from the Manned Spacecraft Center, they have come to get the mission into orbit. RTC, we use Site Select, Guido, GNC, and ECOM to Milock. In Mission Control in Houston, flight controllers wait to take over command of the mission as soon as it lifts off the pad. Among these men are four who watch with special interest. Astronauts Jim McDivitt and Rusty Schweikert who are scheduled to fly the first manned lunar module. And in a support room next to the control room, astronauts Frank Borman and Bill Anders, who will fly the lunar module on its rehearsal of the first manned lunar mission. Go flight. GNC. Go flight. Procedures. Go flight. AFD. Go. Network. Go flight. Computer soup. Go flight. RTC, you on AFD conference. RTC is on AFD conference. Roger. Best of luck. Okay, go ahead and reload. Flight CVTS Black 2, verify your go for launch. Roger, we are go for launch. Okay, all flight controllers, let's play it cool. Launch sequence start. Launch came on January 22nd, 1968. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Transmit 
five enter. Line start, five enter. Cross tough K. Affirmative. Program 11. Okay, TLK P11. Roll pitch start. Roll and pitch. Go on IP. Go IP. 1,200 telemetry measurements indicated that the Saturn 1B performance was the best ever. The launch and insertion into Earth orbit are on the nose. Cut off plus 50. Hodge, cut off plus 50. The aerodynamic shroud is jettisoned. Now the next critical step, the opening of the protective metallic petals and the separation of Lunar Module 1 from its cocoon. RTC booster, transmitting slot deploy. Roger. Trans we are transmitting slot deploy. Okay, all flight controllers, we have slot deploy A and B relay indications, no physical monitor indication. Everything is nominal. We get a go for separation. On schedule, the reaction control engines of Lunar Module 1 pull it free of its protective cocoon. Now begins the long coast preparatory to the first firing of the descent engine. While the LEM coasts, tracking stations pinpoint its position and determine its orbit with accuracy. We will not pulse the engine. And the maneuver is go at this time based on the onboard. Roger, Houston. Roger, Houston is go for the burn. The lunar module nears the Australian coast. The Carnarvon tracking station takes command. The time is nearing for the first burn of the descent engine, the first rocket engine designed to be throttled, a necessary feature for a lunar landing. This will be its first burn in space. Dips on. Dips on. Ten percent. Ten percent. We got a ping caution. Program caution. Roger. Dips off. But something goes wrong. Instead of the full 38 second burn, the engine shuts down after only four seconds. An early look at the data indicates the onboard computer did not allow for the tolerances and errors within this most complex of all missions. It shut down the descent engine when it sensed an error of less than one and a half seconds. Now the success of the mission rests squarely on the team in mission control and in the tracking stations. The nominal plan is out the window. On communications lines all over the world, the alternates are discussed. But the final word must come from flight director Gene Kranz. I guess our best plan here, and I think the way we're going to go, Go ahead. Is alternate Charlie. Go ahead. In the attitude you've got. Go ahead. At 6.15 elapsed. Go ahead. Okay. The long throttle burn of the descent engine would be cut to two minutes and occur during its pass over the United States. Then the descent engine would go to 100% thrust preparatory for the biggest test of the mission, fire in the hole. Over California now, up and down the power scale. The first rocket engine capable of controlled variations of its propulsion force is passing the test. This is the time of maximum stress on the lunar module and on the men, flight controllers, astronauts, and engineers, to whom lunar module one represents years of their professional lives. And now there is another factor. A second test for the ascent stage is a burn to depletion of its propellant. This was to come one orbit after fire in the hole to test the restart capability of the engine. Now, if it looks critical, this burn will be combined with fire in the hole. Max first. Raj. Watch stage. Staging. Raj, staging. Apps on. Okay, let's watch this. We got 60 seconds. Let's make a good go now go here. Flight fighter, we're looking at White Sands track. It is good. It's solid. We're go. The burn is good. Lunar Module 1 is performing fantastically well as a spacecraft. The shutdown order is given after 60 seconds of ascent burn. Now it is time for the burn to depletion. However, as the Lunar Module continues its flight, 
the Earth has rotated under it until it has moved nearly off the tracking range. LAM-1 will now pass over only one station, Hawaii, that can give the new and accurate information its computer needs and can command the engine to restart. It looks like on the coming pass, Hawaii will send the update and on the next, send the command signal. But now another problem crops up. Flight, we're going to run out of RCS and B here the way we're going. Okay, Jack, let's stay cool. Because of the new mode of flight, the attitude rockets are running low on propellant. It looks as though these small but critical engines may not last for two more orbits. But an update of orbit information shows that Lunar Module 1 will just pass within range of the Carnarvon station, whose range has been extended by the addition of the tracking ship Coastal Sentry Quebec, CSQ. Flight Director Kranz makes his decision. Update at Carnarvon and fire at Hawaii. It's go for the burn. Guidance from flight, we're having a lot of dropouts. Roger, flight. Ecom, let him know when he's clear to command again. Go. But the pass over Carnarvon is too short. The full update does not get to the lunar module, including an instruction that would have drained some of the propellant from the ascent engine tanks into the tanks of the attitude rockets. Without this propellant, it is doubtful if the final ascent burn can be ignited. Now it gets tight. Tank pressure is just enough. It has to be this orbit. The flight team is under the gun. Cran's plan is time critical. The rest of the information will be sent up early during the Hawaii pass. After a quick guidance check, the ascent propulsion system will be fired. The signal to ignite the engine is PRA-5. You have clock and compare pulses. That's negative, flight. We got a spacecraft reject on that. We don't show any clock compare pulses, flight. Retransmit. Guidance, execute PRA start. It's go. The burn works. And at shutdown, it holds. All systems are still operating as expected, beyond what was expected. It's been a tremendous test of the engine, and that's what it was all about. Do you want me to stand by here? Negative, you've done it all, and good work, Gary. Beautiful job. Throughout the flight of Apollo 5, the lunar module had performed magnificently. All systems operated either as predicted or far exceeded the predictions. The purpose of the Apollo 5 mission was to initiate the series of flight tests that will ultimately qualify the lunar module for its part in the lunar landing mission. The important uh, features of the mission were operation of the descent propulsion system and specifically it was started, stopped, throttled twice and during the last burn of the de descent propulsion system the ascent propulsion engine was fired to stage the upper stage of the lunar module away from the descent stage simulating an abort uh, commanded by an astronaut uh, uh, approaching the lunar surface. Then the ascent engine was burned twice, the first time for about one minute, and the second time for a total of six and a half minutes. The objectives of the mission uh, were achieved and it was very successful uh, and fulfilled its part in the series of missions that constitute uh, the steps in getting to the moon. <laughs>